wings to fly won't take you to the stars. Use the metal for a boat and you won't sail too far. Stop sitting in the dark, stirring metal clouds about. You will change your life forever when you figure out. The secret code, 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 Science can be tricky, it can overheat your brain. Science can be hard to chew, each bite can be a pain. Stop sitting in the dark, stirring metal clouds about. You will change your life forever when you figure out. The secret code. One request, don't touch the exhibits. This is a unique dinosaur egg which I found on an expedition in Tanzania. While the rest of the pieces in the exhibition allow us to accurately see how our world was in the time of the dinosaurs. Huh, but these are all fakes. Not fakes, just refabrications. Well, if truth be told, all the exhibits are replicas, all except the egg. But how do we know that that's all how it was? Anyone can make up all sorts of dragons. But paleontology does not fantasize, it examines. Our dear planet is roughly four and a half billion years old. We can restore the last several thousand years of this cycle thanks to the science of history. According to various sources, from legends and chronicles to the first rock inscriptions, which are more than 40,000 years old. However, this is negligible compared to the rest of the life of the planet. What was before? In general terms, this question is answered by physics and astronomy. But these exact sciences, alas, are not able to tell us about the diversity of living organisms that existed for billions of years before the appearance of a rational man. And here, paleontology comes to our aid. The scientific study of prehistoric organisms. A picture of the ancient world can be traced through fossils and remains that have survived from ancient times to the present day. Thanks to these studies, we know that life appeared on Earth more than three and a half billion years ago. During this time, the journey from tiny microorganisms to amazing giant dinosaurs that existed on the planet for nearly 200 million years has come and gone. I suggest we take a break and have some tea. <gasps> ah, were you scared? <laughs> Keep up, Prickles. The boss is back in town. Everybody's more relaxed here now, I bet, without any dinosaurs. <laughs> uh. <laughs> what a funny cutie pie. Who is it? Well, I guess it's you. Stop joking around, Prickles. What, what, where are my claws? And fangs. And where are my scales? I didn't take them. I said, don't touch anything. It wasn't me. It was him. <laughs> but he really was there. And now he's hiding somewhere. Completely alone. He doesn't even have his own name. Listen, you've been driving me crazy with this imaginary friend. Why would you make up someone when you already have me, huh? Peter, what do you think? That's a good name. Well, sit here then, in your chicken shack. Darko? Darko? Righty, and what is this? I found you. But I was never lost. D I thought of a name for you. Peter. Uh-huh, thanks. It just doesn't seem to suit a dinosaur. But you're not really a dinosaur. 
Get over it, Freckles. It's temporary. It's got to be here somewhere. How to become what you want. But you were only born yesterday, and you already know how to read. We dinosaurs are not quite there yet, all right? Got it? I'm just looking at the pictures. Why would you want to be a dinosaur? You're fine as you are. And what do you know about it? You've seen yourself in a mirror? I have, and I'm okay with it. Oh, don't lie. You've just accepted it. Being them would be cool. Well, could you at least come and meet the others? It's just that nobody believes me. Are you nuts? Like this? Wait till I become a dinosaur. Then they can look all they want. <laughs> And now, sorry, but me and Arakli are going to go play and do a lot of interesting stuff. But why a chicken? How is some chicken better than a rabbit? I'd understand if it were a dinosaur, but a chicken? Well, if it makes you feel any better, we can say that it's almost the same thing. Paleontologists have to piece together a picture of the past through tiny details, bone fragments, fossils, and petrified fragments of plants. And only until recently, to get the picture, scientists had to be guided basically by their own imagination. But then, modern methods of study and analysis came to the aid of paleontology. It became possible to accurately determine the age of the samples, find remnants of organic matter and fossils, and even extract DNA fragments in ancient remains. Although previously, it had been believed that DNA cannot survive for more than 600 years. This scientific approach presented many new discoveries in paleontology and dispelled no less errors. So, for example, back in the 20th century, it was thought that velociraptors looked like this. But later studies have shown that these lizards were evolutionarily very close to birds, which means that they probably had feathers. Now, no one is surprised that all modern birds originated from dinosaurs. And the analysis of the genomes of various birds show that the least amount of chromosomal changes in relation to their ancestor was acquired by a chicken. She is actually the closest relative of the dinosaur. So Chico's imaginings are not a fantasy. It's a scientific fact. <laughs> Daco, sorry, but I don't think you'd make much of a shrink. Are you peeking? I found a way. Let's get out of here, Arakli. You're gonna make another mess, and everyone's gonna be sure that I've gone mad. Ah, they all go mad when you see that I pulled off. Come on, come with me. Wait till you see this. Look what I found in the archive of Mr. Hat Rockhead. Just what I need. I can become big and strong like that one-toed thing on the video, like a dinosaur! That requires compliment experiments, and I doubt Doco would agree to it. Huh, what to do? Change the DNA of a carrot? Don't you dare! That was very dangerous! Oh, come on, don't exaggerate! <laughs> Shall we split it? Just imagine, we'll be ginormous reptiles! We'll take over the world. I... I don't want to. <laughs> it's stupid. I'm okay being a hedgehog. Thank you very much. Whatever, Prickles. Suit yourself. But if you change your mind, I'll be easy to find. <laughs> I'll be the massive dinosaur. <laughs> Peter? <laughs> <laughs> the chicken fly, and chicken steam. Eat the chicken, chicken, where are chicken, you? Chicken, chicken. The chicken fly, and chicken steam. The chicken, 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 chicken. Yes, I want to be a 
the most important. Oh, yes, what? I wanna be the strangest too. Yes, I wanna be the unsurpassed. And frankly speaking, I want to say, I lead a pot of semolina. I put on a coat with a half a dollar to make it clear to death and mother. I will be caught the dinosaurs of the Ha ha ha! NEC is now knee high for me. Uh oh. Oh no, we didn't agree to that. You're really cool. Something like a real dinosaur. No one knows for sure what a real dinosaur looked like. Docker was saying they even had feathers. Uh, oh, I knew it! The, where are you going? You know, dinosaurs are born to conquer the world. And I've already been stuck with you for too long. <laughs> and Peter, that's a good name. Maybe I'll keep it. Now they definitely won't believe me. That I didn't make you up. Oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree, how old we are, Peter? Oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree. Oh, you're back. <laughs> Chico, where have you been, huh? That's a nice costume. <laughs> it's just nonsense. Just in case you want to do hug your imaginary friend, but he was uh, imaginary, and here I am. Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Uh huh. Cock a doodle doo. Is that is that a real Firebird? Of course not. It's her first cousin on her mother's side. And here, I'm posing for Picasso and his famous dub of peace painting. I never would have believed it. And yes, not too many people notice the similarities. Well, this photo looks amazingly familiar. My good friend, this entire story happened specifically because of you. How's that? Why don't I remember anything about it? Well, that's because you weren't there. Honestly, it's not getting very clear. Oh, it's the most amazingly funny story. <laughs> Everything started, of course, because of one of your usual experiments. Careful, in your hands lies the future of mankind. Whew, judging from this, mankind has a very heavy future. Holy carrots! It looks like a monument to that plate that I broke last week. <laughs> Maybe it was a very famous dish. Very funny. This device, my witty friend, sends radio signals into space. You should have just said so then. It's a radio. Technically, yes. But this isn't an ordinary radio. In my signal, there is a friendly encoded message to alien civilizations. There you go. You what? Believe in aliens? Indeed I do. After all, Earth isn't the only planet in the universe. In our galaxy, there are about 200 billion stars. And at least one planet is spinning around every one of them. What? And there's an alien city on every one of them? Unfortunately, no. But given that quantity of planets, the likelihood that life exists on at least one of them is very, very high. Be more specific, please. Is there any way to determine the probability? It is possible. There is even a special formula for calculating the number of civilizations in our galaxy. 
This equation was thought up in 1961 by American scientist Frank Drake. Cool! I wish I knew what all these squiggles meant. Oh, that is elementary. The first factor indicates how many stars are born in the galaxy every year. The second factor, what portion of these stars have planets? The third factor shows what share of them are suitable for sustaining life. The fourth factor is the probability of life originating on the planet given the right conditions. The fifth factor is the probability of the genesis of intelligent life on inhabited planets. And the sixth factor shows the percentage of civilizations which would be capable of contact. And the last factor at last. The seventh one indicates the time during which these civilizations exist and perhaps transmit radio signals into space. If we multiply all these values, then we will get the number of civilizations which are ready to accept a radio signal from our planet. Incredible! So does that mean that aliens really exist? Well, what did I tell you? You see, there's even a formula for it. And they might receive our signal at any given moment? And arrive here. Theoretically, yes. However, we don't know a majority of the values in this formula yet and can therefore only assume. Uh, uh. <laughs> we can't have all this garbage around for our fellow intelligent life form brothers. Everything needs to be in tip top shape. Cosmic shape. We need to warn everyone immediately. What? To us? To fly. Space brothers in arms. What? Now, we'll all be darned. Are you ready for contact with alien civilizations? Earth welcomes you, dear visitor, who plowed at a great hurtling speed through boundless space to extend a friend of handship to our planet. We have it's long so waited small. for your visit. Prepare Perhaps for we're it for all some too time. big. Our expectations yeah. have all Looks been like a tadpole. Barry! How uncultured. And I ask you to accept this gift as a sign of our readiness for contact out of the goodness, as they say, of our hearts. He respects traditions. And now for the cultural part of our program. This is a green planet. This is winter. This is summer. This is a tasty little cutlet. This is a poem about love. This is a shovel. This is a brooch. And a few more poems. An automotive carburetor. And this is the favorite carrot. These are dumbbells for exercise. These are weed and garden beds. And this is a puzzle. Hide and seek. This is a creative rush. It's a diesel fuel engine. It's a rubbish and sweet butter. These are my glasses in a case. This is a black Casanova. These are piano passages. These are real landscapes. These are boats and fuselages. This is so. And this is life. This is a bicycle belt. This is a book called Allocution. This is a green planet. This, this is a favorite.
Tell me, my friend, whether you are authorized to choose a worthy Earthling for a return trip to your planet. Dibs, I'll go on a social visit. Fly away on a spaceship. Hmm, Crash, certainly your application is more than worthy. But in my opinion, the one who should go should be... The most beautiful! He must be the most beautiful, or she. Nine! Contact between civilizations is primarily an exchange of achievements in the area of technical progress! Uh-huh. I'll go and learn about their agricultural achievements. <laughs> As a matter of fact, uh, I wouldn't mind either. But it's very dangerous! An airless spaceship G-forces, I mean! <laughs> Only someone very well prepared could withstand such an experience. <clears throat> I'm, I'm all right where I am, and weightlessness makes my horns itch. And nevertheless, I believe that I would be the best candidate... <laughs> Why is that exactly? My friends, why are you torturing this unfortunate creature? That's it. We're starting an interplanetary conflict. And... And nevertheless, my friends, allow me to ask, why are you torturing this poor frog? Uh, uh, a frog? But what about aliens? Visitors? How about your space radio? Didn't it work? Oh, I see you've been, as they say, caught up in this topic. I should note that sending a radio impulse to other civilizations is not the only way to search for fellow intelligent life forms. It is possible to investigate planets which move around the stars similar to our sun and at the same distance as Earth. They are about 150 million kilometers away. If the star's radiation is greater than the sun's, then life becomes possible at greater distances from it and vice versa. For example, if radiation from the star is more than the sun's by a factor of four, then mortal life becomes possible at a distance from the star of 300 million kilometers. Unfortunately, unexplored planets of this kind are very far from us, and it is almost impossible to see them in a telescope. Therefore, we can only guess about their existence from their brightness. A planet rotates around a star and hides a part of its radiation from the astronomer. If we periodically record the reduction of the star's brightness, then it is possible to calculate the period of the planet's rotation and its relative size. Then we calculate the mass of the star and distance to it in order to understand whether life is possible on that planet. It's estimated that in our galaxy, life could exist on approximately 11 billion planets. And, and if we have fellow intelligent space brothers in arms, then our radio signal will only reach them after many, many years. Is something wrong? Uh, and there you have the story. <laughs> Contact between civilizations, space brothers in arms. My friend, you don't listen to me at all. Did you see that? But that's... Phenomenal! Sample 428, an amoeba from Jupiter. Resistant to sulfuric acid and liquid nitrogen. Wow! You know... I never thought I'd ever have to say this, but discovering life on other planets hasn't been as exciting an experience as I had hoped. Hasn't been as exciting an experience as I'd hoped. People, check out our latest batch of extraterrestrial organisms. This is bacteria from Venus and microorganisms. Where should we put them? <sighs> Anywhere you want. We'll go get more. Do you know what I'd like, dear colleague? 
to not just meet new forms of life, but an intelligent new life form. Imagine how wonderful that would be. Nein, I can't imagine. How could we show our research for the next couple of thousand light years if nothing intelligent in the universe is found? But what about parallel universes? Perhaps their development went a different way and there were alternative forms of intelligence. Well, the device is pretty much almost ready. My friends, I'm delighted to announce that we can now travel between parallel universes. Pin, if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah. After much research, I found a way to shift through to parallel worlds, you see. This is PSW, a portable space warp. Ah, I invented. The range is three meters. What a cool gadget. Now, let's conduct an experiment on moving through parallel space. Are you ready? Achtung! Nein! 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 Uh, did the teleportation work? Uh, difficult to say. That's wonderful. We will assume that the tests were successful. It's time to take a trip. Come on, everybody, come closer. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Hey, it's a bad idea. Achtung! Is this really another world? Somehow it's not that parallel. Uh, again? Ladies? Gentlemen? Somebody pinch me. Phenomenal. Pardon me, madam. This is mine. Everyone prepare for teleport. Yeah, but... In this parallel universe, there's no intelligent... Verstein! <laughs> Achtung! Sorry, what was that? It's just a normal group hallucination. Naturally, but that case. Uh, who wants a cup of tea? Buttercup flowers, lacy ribbons. Phew. Where are we now? If these are their flowers here, <laughs> well, then what kind of bees have they got? Now that's a flower bed. What? Have we shrunk? Now this is something new. There can surely be other forms of life that we couldn't possibly even imagine. You mean, like this? Holy carrots! That thing's what? Alive? Phenomenal! Most likely in this world, development has taken quite a different path. Moving plant. Are you kidding? We have such miracles in our neck of the woods. <laughs> really? First I've heard. You should have studied botany. It's a science. Botany is not often underestimated as a science. But this is one of the most ancient sciences on Earth, just so you know. Our ancestors had to learn quickly to distinguish the poisonous plants from the edible ones. And that was the first form of botany. Scientists today have studied and cataloged almost 350,000 species of various plants. And this number only grows as new ones are discovered all the time. The study of plants opens our civilization to the amazing secrets of nature. This knowledge helps us in agriculture and medicine, in cooking and in industry. And all of this thanks to the most important of the sciences, botany. I thought botany was just the neato word for Chico. Buttercup, flowers, cacti, mushrooms. I'm afraid our knowledge of botany won't be very useful to us. Terrestrial plants are a lot different from these local specimens. Friend, we come in peace. 
for the sake of establishing contact with fellow intelligent life. Guten <sighs> Tag! Phenomenal. It understands. Huh? Guten Tag? Nine! Not allowed! Give it back! It's not a toy! Oh! Hey, you! Oh my god, Buttercup! Yeah, give, give it, it back! back. Hold on! It's Come just on. an attempt by the native to hey. study hey. our. Hey. Come on. It's beating him! Oh, you little weed! Hey, stop! Get him! Come back here! Oh, Where you going? Oh, oh. Carefully, any kind of contact has to be friendly. My friends, be more tolerant. Oh, rabbit can't catch a plant? You kidding me? You shouldn't take what's not yours. Wait a sec. Where'd he go? Something tells me this intelligent life form isn't so intelligent. You know, he sure knew how to move. <laughs> Terrestrial plants are actually quite similar, though. Some of them can move around too, you see. We are all used to plants as creatures that are not particularly mobile. But there are also some very active fellows among them. For example, the sensitive Mimosa Pudica. All that it takes is the slightest touch and she immediately hides her leaves. It's this reaction to touch that gave it its nickname. Or for example, the dancing Desmodium Gyrans, which moves quickly and constantly flaunts its leaves. This plant is also known as the telegraph plant. The Desmodium can even dance to music. I'd rather our mimosa hit than these local flower sources. And now how are we gonna get home? It looks like we'll have to once again establish contact with our fellow intelligent life dude. So... A rabbit tracking? This is something new. I got it! I've got the trail! The flower source went... that way! This... way... Why didn't we just stay home? We've got plenty of our own intelligence. Why are we looking out for new types for? You don't seem to have that sense of cosmic loneliness when suddenly you realize that you are the only intelligent species in the whole universe. Stop. Check it out. Look. Wow. This is a clear sign of civilization. Perhaps, in this way, we're being invited to make contact. It's about time to. I've already worked up an appetite. Something's just not right. How's that for making contact? No, uh, regardless, uh, that's a pretty sophisticated tactic for luring hunters, which are apparently of a higher intellectual level. This doesn't prove a single thing. There are plenty of hunters like this where we're from. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah, yourself. I'm telling you, we've got plants like that. Carnivorous ones. Normally, plants need no more than sun and water, and all the useful substances they get from the soil. But in some regions where these nutrients are not very good, in order to survive, plants have to become predators. 
And if you're a predator, then you must be able to hunt. That, of course, is not an easy thing when you're a flower and you can't really move. So certain flowers have adapted themselves to lure their prey with alluring smells to colored petals. A fly flies by, smells the aroma, and thinks the table's been set for him. He sits on a flower and, like that, becomes a treat himself. The best-known example of one of these plant predators is, of course, the Venus flytrap. But in nature, there are many other flowers that can also lure their victims, and not merely for pollination. So this ain't no walk in the park. The flowers around here could even have teeth. We gotta be more careful. In search of other intelligent life forms, a detachment led by Donko was sent to explore parallel worlds. A world of living plants proves not so hospitable, with the friends finding themselves in search of a lost device needed to return home. In addition, what remains a mystery is, are the local inhabitants in fact intelligent, or is their behavior no different to most ordinary plants? The target is not located. How can you hear me? Over? I hear you perfectly. Let's keep looking. Over. We're just going around in circles. Don't you think we've lost the trail? Stay positive, Daco. This expedition was meant to find fellow intelligent life forms, and we're running after a flower that stole our equipment. I would never have seen this coming. Uh, 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 Huh. Daco found a trail. It's uh, this way. Uh, huh. Excellent. Very good work. Hey, good job. Uh, Super. Uh, 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 uh. Huh? Daco, are you coming uh, or what? Uh, uh. Check it out. Uh -huh. uh, uh. It's a good thing this flower's tracks glow in the dark, or we'd be here till morning. Uh, I doubt that. <sighs> Better wait till morning. I can't feel my legs. Agreed. A little break wouldn't hurt, but only for a couple of minutes. <sighs> Excuse me, but would you mind? night isn't it the wonderful weather the, what am I saying I'm a representative of the scientific world of earth friend we are here in peace in order to establish contact with fellow thinking life forms wait I didn't mean any offense where are you going where are you huh
<gasps> I'm asking you, don't disappear anymore. Let's just start over again, can we please? I don't even know where to start. <laughs> uh, allow me to present you with, uh, I. Hmm, a bad idea, I'll admit. I was hoping only on meeting fellow intelligent life forms. I didn't expect to find something more, something beautiful. <gasps> I'm ready to stay in your world forever. Oh. Daco! Daco! Can you hear me? <gasps> Enchantress. Daco! Is he all right? Daco, are you okay? You had us really worried. No, what happened? Where am I? And where is that beautiful stranger? What stranger exactly? I found you passed out in a clearing. Admit it. You picked some sort of flower, didn't you, Mr. Explorer? Uh, yes, I remember something like that. Well, congratulations. Looks like you came across some sort of poisonous plant. In the plant world, although there are some active ones, most of them are immobile creatures and the scourged all around them, the seemingly invisible. They have to defend themselves, and so Mother Nature awards them with fragrances. Their own smells protect them well against the pests, such as parsley, dill, thyme, sage, peppermint. Yes, the list is endless, actually. However, what's bad for an insect to us is healthy and tasty. What nature has created for millions of years, like protection, turned out to be an excellent seasoning for us. <laughs> but there are plants that can protect themselves not only from insects, but also from larger creatures. These can be dangerous even for humans. Datura, Belladonna, Billigolov, Oleander, Cerberus. These are just some of the deadly poisonous flowers. Such beauty is not something worth tasting. You shouldn't even smell it. You don't say. Plants are powerful guys. Wait a minute. Are you sure there was no one next to me? I don't know what you saw there, but I didn't see anyone. Hey, be careful with the botanicals. Let's go and catch that thieving flower before he goes too far away. Here it is, Cactus Parasite. Hush, you'll scare it off. Let's get it on my command at the count of three. One. It's not for you to run after green-eyed strangers. <laughs> Two. Three. Wait a sec. Oh. He's gone. Daco, what are you doing? Just a minute. I didn't tell any of you that she had green eyes. No? <laughs> Didn't you mention it? Don't try and fool me. She was there, wasn't she? I didn't just imagine it. And she had eyes. Beautiful, green eyes. Let's all just calm down a little bit. I'm not going to calm down. I must find her. And you can keep searching for that plant. You can even head back home without me. Holy carrots, Daco, a joke's a joke, but... We've got to stop him. He's already getting away. Then you won't stop me. Wait up! Daco, <laughs> don't be silly now! <laughs> Where are you going?
way, this is my own personal choice. <laughs> Thank you. But you still won't stop me. You saw her yourselves. <sighs> I saw. That means you should understand me. I get it. Say goodbye to the others. For me. <sighs> Darko, wait. Let me just tell you something as a parting gift. Some form of your botany again. Well, some extra knowledge about this world could come in handy. Only botany. As everyone knows, in order to reproduce, plants need to exchange pollen with each other. In other words, pollinate. And not everyone can pollinate on their own. And that's where insects come to the rescue. To pollinate quicker and better, the flowers lure insects who are taken in by bright coloring and delicious aromas. But the most cunning of all is the flower by the name of Orchid Chilaglottis. This actress has learned to mimic the smells and appearance of the female wasp so precisely that wasps can't distinguish them. Everything would be fine, except that after seeing the orchid, the male wasps completely stop paying attention to their girlfriend wasps and continue to live in this delusion until their final days. You see, orchids can look like a wasp and smell like a wasp, but she was never actually a wasp. These are pistols and stamens. Why are you so silent, Daco? Well, you're not a wasp after all. Unfortunately, no. Wasps, for the sake of their own happiness, don't know what botany is. Daco! Mary! All right, botanist. You're the wise old master. Let's go home. Yeah, we were in this greenhouse too long. A detachment led by Daco ends up in a parallel universe inhabited by unusually developed plants. While others try to solve the problem of returning home, Daco continues his search for intelligent life forms among the local flora. Though unfortunately, his first contact ended in complete disappointment. I reckon that fluoride's somewhere near. Wow, that's a great view. Aha, uh -huh, I can see his tracks. Here, we need a kind of funny joke about an overgrown weed, but nothing seems to come to mind. What do you mean, Joe? Everyone's fed up. Just one little problem. How do we get down there? Find some sort of long climbing rope. What do you think? To be honest, my mountaineering skills are not what they were. There's a better way. How about we just fly down? Fly? At our age? It's not good to laugh at the poor penguin. I'm still a bird. I didn't mean that. Ah, uh, so then what? Maybe fly down with the help of all these local overgrown flowers. Avoiding danger and pollinating are not the only things that plants need to think about. Another thing important in the life of any flower is to disperse the seeds of its future offspring. If this isn't solved in some creative way, then the entire species will grow in one place, which of course will become way too crowded. So plants have to adapt themselves in order to find ways to disperse their seeds, each thinking it up for themselves. For example, the Rafflesia has the help of elephants for this. They step on her flowers and transport her seeds around her. And the wind helps to sow the field. But there are plants that grow much farther. Their seeds have learned to fly. 
For example, a Javan cucumber seeds can fly up to 100 meters without any help from the wind. These seeds have even been copied for aviation. And for us to get down, the common <laughs> dandelion approach should do. Let's go! I, I, I ain't going! We'll be smashed to pieces! Let's remember our youth. Oh, what was I thinking? There he is, over there. Let's take a look. Subject has been detected. Prepare for landing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> Hey. <laughs> nice trip. I just keep thinking, is it at all possible to have intellect in plants? Or are all their actions simply functions to protect or, you know, reproduce? Depends on how you look at it. Maybe they have reasoning, but only in their own way. Plants do not have eyes, nose, and ears. They cannot move without muscles. But despite this, we have much more in common with them than it would seem. So, they may not have eyes, but they feel the warmth and the sunlight. This is especially true of sunflowers. Speaking to plants may not work, but it doesn't stop them from communicating with smells. If one flower gets attacked by pests, it sends a special signal to its neighbor to warn them of the danger, and is then able to prepare, having summoned the necessary protective smell. Plants have other senses, too. For example, they feel the position in space. Regardless of how you move the pot, the plant will still grow upwards. And as I have already said, plants also feel touch. And recent studies have shown that they may even have memory. They also say that plants react to sound. But this hasn't been scientifically proven. Although, <laughs> I still like to chat with my vegetables. It makes them grow even bigger. There it is. Let's go and get that thing already. Now wait. If we've learned anything about the local flora, it is not to act hastily. Yeah, yeah. It seems this overgrown weed is waiting for something. You know what I'm thinking? If there are such flowers around here, then what kind of bugs do you think there are here? Here comes the answer to that question. It looks like we'll have to save our thief. Otherwise, they'll just eat him together with our device. <laughs> hey, you get out of here, flower guzzlers! Shoo, shoo, shoo from here! Get going, you ungrown butterflies! This now is our leaf that flower alone. Big boys. Back up, it's not or yours! I'll give you a piece of my mind! Stop this right now! Yeah, you get out of here! This is our glade! Hey, cool how we drove them away. <laughs> it was even too easy somehow. Looks like it's not us they're afraid of. My lovely mother nature. Why didn't I think of it immediately? 
Do you mean you've remembered the earthly analogy again? Exactly. In the world of Flora, there is one amazing flower manipulator, Aqualegia. Unlike other flowers, the Aqualegia doesn't rely on its smells to scare off pests. It acts more cunningly and thoughtfully. The Aqualegia attracts the aroma of small insects, which are harmless to it, and then glues them to itself. These insects, in turn, attract larger spiders. Why is she doing this? For protection, of course. Now these spiders have become her personal security. Keeping her safe from gluttonous caterpillars, which can do her harm. And with such protection, the Aqualegia stays safe. Huh, then it turns out that this flower noid specifically lured us in to drive the caterpillars away. No, Crash. We are the bait for someone even bigger. That's a weed. Give us our gadget. We really jumped into a catapult. No, only a miracle will save us. It's you. L Listen, I don't know if you understand us or are just mimicking, but if you do, I beg you. Don't allow your fellow intelligent life forms to be eaten! It's no use, Docco. It's unlikely that he'll understand us. I told you. So you understand me? Forgive me for doubting. I could not imagine that you... Surprise! I'm afraid that this will remain a mystery. Were those plants intelligent? And can we, in principle, determine that we have met another mind? Maybe it will be so different that it won't fit into our own understanding. Do you miss her a lot? What? Me? Oh, believe me, this is merely of scientific interest. From the point of view of our own cosmic solitude. Well, that's a shame. You don't even know you were right for each other. Speaking of which, what is your zodiac sign? Ah, uh, uh, Pin, when will you find a way to get us back to our world? We're working on it! <laughs> yeah, yeah! We are working! And I'd stay here a little longer. And then nice to be here. And then Do I'm you take your tea with yeah. milk? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. Fun fun. I could live like this. D dessert? If you say so. Perchance. I'll dedicate a note. To you. <laughs> yes, but horoscopes, they're so unscientific. So why don't you tell me even more about this botany of yours? Eh, with great pleasure. <laughs> 